Shalom, family. Shalom. I want to talk to you about Revelation chapter 2. This is the uh, famous chapter which a lot of churches from the pulpit preach that uh, this is an end time uh, prophecy and whatever. And I believe there is some truth to that. But I want to concentrate on one thing here. Now we know for a fact that Paul the Apostle was the man who takes credit for the churches in Asia Minor. And we know also for a fact that Paul was in Ephesus. He was at Ephesus. And he takes credit for the church at Ephesus, correct? Now, strangely enough, in, the, in chapter 2 of the book of Revelation, the, the church at Ephesus is being rebuked for allowing these so-called divine apostles to infiltrate and corrupt the church at Ephesus. Now, we know for a fact that if you look in the book of Ephesians, we'll see that Paul makes it a point to establish his credibility because I'm sure some people were questioning his doctrines. So that's not dispute it so let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 is important because so many Christians will go against even the words of the law and the prophets will go against the words of even their Jesus because Jesus never taught about being saved by grace and through faith alone and not by works that goes against even the Messiah so let's look at Revelation 2 now with that in mind let's look at it is Paul the Apostle truly the Apostle of the Most High? I'll let you decide for yourself. It says to the angel, divine messenger of the church in Ephesus, write, These are the words of the one who holds firmly the seven stars, which are angels or messengers of the seven churches. In his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, the seven churches. I know your deeds. I know your toil and your patient endurance that you cannot tolerate those who are evil now if you know anything about hebrew the word evil just means dysfunction meaning that these apostles who have come in claiming to be apostles of god have caused dysfunction in the church have caused people to err or twist the truth that is revealed by the most high through even the messiah because remember i told you paul contradicts Messiah on many points and pastors will try and use Zionism dispensationalists by say that Jesus came to talk to the Jews and preach to the Jews but Paul Paul came for the Gentiles if you don't believe me look it up he says so those who are evil meaning they're preaching dysfunctional doctrines and have tested that critically appraised those who call themselves apostles how many times have you heard Paul the Apostle try to establish his credibility, his apostleships? He was always defending himself. He went as far as many times in saying that this gospel that he was preaching was his gospel and his gospel alone. He went as far as saying that these other 12 apostles who everybody calls super apostles were nothing compared to him. Look it up. Test to see if I'm telling you the truth. Now, let's continue on. Who call themselves apostle, call themselves special messengers, personally chosen representatives of Christ. Now these people are claiming that they're special, chosen by Christ. Be careful, because that's exactly what Paul always claims to be. That he has some hidden knowledge, hidden mysteries, things that nobody else knew except him. But yet the apostles were divinely appointed by the Messiah himself to preach truth. But Paul says, no, never mind those guys. I have divine truth uh, uh, from an angel of light who claims to be Jesus, who fell out of the heavens and, and talked to me and gave me this divine mysteries and blah, 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 blah. Which I told you that his testimony on three separate occasions is three different distinctive uh, different witness accounts or eyewitness testimonies of Paul. In a court of law, that wouldn't stand up. That would be an unreliable witness anywhere in a court of law let's continue on and these apostles who say they are apostles are not and have found themselves to be liars and imposters how many times have you heard me say that paul the apostle is a false apostle a split-tongued deceiver he calls himself an apostle of christ but is not and here paul was the one who started this church allegedly but yet 
the divine messenger, whether it's Jesus or the Most High, because that's up for debate, he says that these, this Paul the Apostle, who, who's taking credit for this church, is a false imposter. How else can you interpret this scripture? He is the soul. Supposedly, uh, tradition says that he was the one. All right, verse 3. And I know that you have, I'm sorry, and I know that you who believe are enduring patiently, enduring, Paul the Apostle, enduring his false doctrines, and are bearing up for my name's sake. So here, if this is indeed Jesus, he's saying you have endured because of the teachings that I personally gave to the twelve, that I personally said came from the Father. They were not hidden. They were not some mysteries. They came from the highest heaven. And that you have not grown weary of being faithful to the truth. Psalm 119, 142 says that the Torah is the truth of the Most High. So these people have remained faithful to the Torah, the instructions, the counsel, the life-given instructions of the Most High. Not Paul Apostle's sloppy grace. So here they're being commended for being faithful to the truth and not to this false apostle who claims himself to be a special messenger with divine uh, hidden knowledge. But I have this charge against you, Ephesians, that you have left your first love. Who was their first love? The Most High. The Most High. The messenger of the Most High, the one you call Jesus, came to reveal the Most High through his character, his teachings, and doctrines. You have lost the depth of love that you had for the Most High and his Torah. So remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent. Repent. That means Teshuvah, come back to the Father. Come back to his instructions, his Torah. You have to understand there was no New Testament when this was written. The only thing these people understood was Torah, was the Father's will, his instructions. There was no New Testament. There was no letters of Paul as they are in a canon today. So remember the heights from which we have fallen. Babylon, Babylon has fallen. Confusion. That's what Christianity is, Babylon. 40,000 denominations and none of them uh, can agree at any given time. How can that be? If you look carefully, you'll see that most of it is attributed to Paul the Apostle and his doctrines have caused so much division and confusion. So remember the heights from which we have fallen. Repent. Come back to the Father. Seek God's will and do the works which you did at first. When you first knew me, otherwise I will visit you and remove your lampstand. The church, its impact from its place unless you repent. Christians repent. Get out of Babylon. Get out of this Christianity. It's a false religion. It's an apostate. That means it's divorced from the Father and from the truth. It's apostate. Look around you. Open up your eyes and look at the churches. All kinds of things. All kinds of abominations and debauchery is going on in Christianity. Even the Mormon church, which claims to be all about family and marriage, has succumbed to the Babylonian system and has endorsed same-sex marriage and now has even uh, has uh, ministries for gay chorus or gay glee club or something in their churches. It's, a, it's an abomination what's happening in Christianity. And the Most High says, repent and get out of her lest you join in her plagues. But here's an important verse 6. It says, you have this to your credit that you hate the works and corrupt teachings of the Nicolaitans that mislead and dilute, dilute the people which I also hate. The Nicolaitans, this one means the laity who overpowers the people. This is the religious establishment. Paul created the Catholic Church. His doctrines were the foundation of the Catholic Church. Every time, pay attention, you're in a church from the pulpit, Nine out of ten times, most of all your messages come from the letters of Paul. Hardly ever do we ever see Paul, uh, 
uh, the words of the Messiah being quoted. And if they are, they're always about some kind of healing or miracles. But they never want to touch the fact that Messiah said he came not to do away with the law and the prophets. He came to do them and he expected all his followers to do the same. So Paul the Apostle once again is questionable here. He took credit for the church at Ephesus. He should take credit for this because the buck stops whoever claims to be the boss. Now go home and read your Bible.